If you are the congressman from Youngstown, Ohio, you are the congressman from what was pronounced today to be the number one highest concentrated poverty rate in America. Youngstown's about halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh, which is sort of like saying it's halfway between rust and belt, and I mean that lovingly. From lumber and grain mills and then on to steel mills, Youngstown used to be a place you could make a living wage until the steel industry collapsed. September 19, 1977, Youngstown Sheet and Tube announced it would lay off 5,000 workers. Since then, since Youngstown, Ohio's Black Monday, the city's gone from being a place that thrived on making things to a place marked by an amazing determination to stick it out, to try to bounce back from the worst. Youngstown is putting in bike racks downtown now, cool ones. These pictures are from a blog called I Will Shout Youngstown. Youngstown celebrates when a landlord manages to rent out a building downtown. Youngstown wants to live. But Youngstown's hard times are getting harder. This report today from Brookings talks about Youngstown's 19 census tracts that are listed as poverty in extreme. And if you are Youngstown's congressman, you are charged with going to Washington, D.C. and pleading Youngstown's case, screaming it into the wind if you have to. Youngstown's congressman is a Democrat named Tim Ryan. Listen to him here uh, on the House floor. He's sort of brilliant here, and it's worth hearing. But while you are listening to him, check out what you can see in this clip as well. Look around him at who he is saying this to. I know many of us have been talking about this for a long, long time uh, to where we've had 30 years of stagnant wages in the United States. And there is no way that we're going to be able to continue to be uh, the leader of the free world or really even have the kind of country that we want if we have this kind of level of inequality. And there are issues that come before the House of Representatives. There are issues that the President is continuing to push that will help rectify this problem that is not getting any attention at all in the House of Representatives. And one final point, you're starting to see it percolate. You know, you saw it in Wisconsin. The coalition in Ohio now against this issue, too, is incredible. Police, fire, teachers, public employees, building trades, auto workers, machinists, average people all coming together to say this is the middle class and we've had it up to here. And Occupy Wall Street, same thing, in income inequality. The congressman from Youngstown, look, pleading Youngstown's case the case to deal with American incomes falling off a cliff if you're not in the 1%, and he is make, that, this is to whom he was speaking. He is making that case to an empty room. So he is both explicitly making that point and he is implicitly making that point that nobody is paying attention to the economic catastrophe that has been wrought in a place like Youngstown. It may be that not enough of D.C. is paying attention, but these very ordinary folks who are part of Occupy Youngstown are paying attention. This is a photo from Occupy Youngstown's General Assembly. Ordinary workaday working Americans who say they've had enough of an economy and a political system that only works for the rich. These are Occupy Youngstown's tents outside a bank, an implicit demand made by physical presence that we ought to expect more out of our systems than that they just take great care of the banks. Looking at their photos today on Facebook, I think this is the sort of anonymous edge of Occupy Youngstown. And here are some Youngstown occupiers who are old enough to remember when the mills sent everybody home and the economic destruction began. Joining us tonight for the interview, having just spoken at Occupy Denver this evening, which I watched on the live stream, uh, is Michael Moore, filmmaker and author of the new book, Here Comes Trouble, Stories from My Life. Uh, Mike, it's great to have you back. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Rachel. Am I right that you are at the tattered cover in Denver? Is that where you are right now? I am at the tattered cover uh, bookstore uh, in Denver, a uh, very famous bookstore here um, in this part of the country. Before you leave, give everybody a hug from me because I love that place. Um, I, I know yes, you were. Yes. I, I, so I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I know, I know you were at Occupy Oakland a few days ago, Occupy Denver today. Um, I've only been to Occupy Wall Street so far. What, what kinds of differences are you seeing when you go to these different, uh, these different protests between these different places, Mike? Um, what I'm seeing are, it's, it's, it's actually quite similar. I've, I've been to probably half a dozen Occupies um, across the country this past week. And it's clear that um, there's, a, there's a real broad cross-section of, of people. I think we're past the early weeks of, of um, showing um, the same 
shot of, of somebody dancing in a long skirt and a bongo <laughs> drum, which I'm all, for, I'm all for dancing in long skirts and bongo <laughs> drums, so don't send me any emails, bongo people. But, but, I, but, but it, what you see now are um, moms and dads bringing kids. <clears throat> you, um, you see grandparents. Uh, you see bus drivers. Uh, you see all kinds of, of people. Um, and you see people who are um, suffering um, just complete abject poverty. So it really is a, quite a, a quilt, if I may say, of, of what this country is. And on, on all kinds of levels, everybody has sort of come together on this one basic issue, which is that our democracy doesn't exist when it comes to our economy. And, and people average everyday people don't have a say anymore as to how this economy runs, how it functions, how it affects people's lives. And I would think that, that if we're talking democracy and a democracy movement here, this is far more important to people than um, the democracy that allows us to vote for politicians, which I'm not saying that that's not important, but it, it, these things are the things that are facing people every day. People's homes are underwater, they're facing foreclosure, they have been foreclosed, they have been thrown out. 50 million people, you know all the stats, you don't, I don't need to go through this again, uh, who don't have health care, um, the, the, the horrible situation with our educational system. You go down the list and everybody has felt this on, on various levels and they've all come together now. And I'll tell you what, from what I've seen, there's no turning back. They are not going away. They have had it. They, they, want, the, they want that, uh, as I just said over here at the, at the Occupy Denver uh, rally, they want that boot that corporate boot off the, their necks. It's just, that's just strangled them at this point and they are not able to function in just the very simple, basic American ways. Let me just have a job. Let me just get a decent salary. Let me put a roof over the heads of my family. And, and if I get sick, damn it, let me see a doctor. I mean, really, is that a lot to ask? Um, it, it, uh, it's, it's been very powerful and uh, I've been very moved by what I've seen and heard. Mike, it is one thing to see uh, the big protests in places like New York and in Oakland and Los Angeles and Philly. It's another thing. It sort of hits you at a different level to see uh, these smaller, smaller groups, things like, you know, Occupy Youngstown, Ohio, Occupy Tulsa, Occupy Pensacola, Occupy Elkhart, Indiana or Casper, Wyoming. What do, what do you make of people choosing to do direct action like this in so many smaller out of the way places? Do you think that how does that affect your understanding of the meaning of all this? It's, it's, that's, that's what's so amazing about this, no, and nobody's organized this. There's no structure, there's no um, uh, email blasts going out uh, uh, through the due to the dues paying members. I, Saturday night, I was at uh, uh, Occupy Grass Valley, California. This is this little town um, as you head up into the mountains uh, up uh, toward Reno. and. I'm thinking this is an area that's got a Republican congressman, and yet there's 400 people um, out here for Occupy Grass Valley. Uh, somebody told me there was 400 people at, at Occupy Fayetteville, Arkansas. Mm. I mean, the media really hasn't been able to cover the breadth of this because it's happening in so many places, and our newsrooms have been so decimated in the last decade that there literally aren't enough cameras or crews to cover all the small towns and villages and and all the places I've seen this just springing up like like it's just it's just an, I've never seen anything like it honestly in my lifetime. Aside from the the common the common issue the common complaint that you are describing that our systems ought to work for for somebody other than just the richest Americans both our political system and our economic system aside from that issue it seems like there are some tactical things that are in common here even if there isn't a big top down organizing movement. There's people using the people's microphone when they have a large when they have a large crowd. There's people doing uh, making decisions and meeting by general assembly, which is a basically a consensus based discussion where everybody gets together and comes to a decision that everybody can live with. Uh, I wonder if you're seeing that a if you're seeing those tactics everywhere and b if there are splits emerging. I mean, as you know, in, in Oakland yesterday, it was a very successful general strike, very successful all day long, basically peaceful until after midnight when uh, there was basically rioting and the Occupy Oakland people are essentially disavowing the people who are rioting. Are you seeing difficult discussions about nonviolence and about potential splits and differences in tactics? 
Yes. Uh, well, yes and no. They're, everyone I've spoken to is committed 100 percent to nonviolence. That this is the only way that this is going to work. In fact, we don't we don't need violence because we're not in the minority here. We're this is the majority. This is a majority movement. Um, if this country is, is of, by, and for the people, if it's to run by the will of the majority, there's no need for violence because the majority have already said we're sick and tired of this, and we expect some changes. Um, I think in Oakland there's a very specific, in terms of the violence there, Oakland has a long history of police abuse, uh, of, of how the black community has been treated. Uh, if they just have one of the worst, I mean, I mean, literally it's almost in the DNA of how Oakland is structured in terms of their city hall and their police, and it doesn't seem to matter who the mayor is, they just can't deal with this basic problem. So I think that had a lot to do with it. But you're also going to have groups that come in wanting to co-opt this movement, mm -hmm. whether it's slick politicians that want the endorsement of what they think is a, is a liberal tea party, or anarchists or others who don't like the nonviolence approach and want uh, some form of violence. But my experience, and I've been around since the anti-Vietnam War days, is that generally, and I told the crowd this over at Denver here just an hour ago, if you see someone trying to incite violence, start with the assumption that that person is an undercover uh, homeland security or cop or whatever, because th this is the history of America where those in charge have tried to um, ignite uh, people, incite them to commit acts of violence. And I tell them, don't be incited. Uh, just assume right away that person is not part of the Occupy movement if that's what they're calling on people to do. Michael, do you mind staying with us for just a minute while we have to take a break? No, sure, that'd be, that'd be fine. All right, Michael Moore joining us from... I'll read a book here while I'm waiting. Exactly, from the Tattered Cover Bookstore, one of America's great indies uh, in, in Denver, Colorado. We'll be right back with more with Michael Moore.